Hey everyone, if you absolutely love the new present and record feature in Canva like I do, but you just want more flexibility with your editing and what you're able to do and what you're able to add and delete and raise your volume and all kinds of different things. If you want all of that, stick with me because you are definitely in the right place. So if you're here, I'm assuming that you already have some familiarity with Canva, so I'm not gonna go over too much on the how to get it all set up. What I'm gonna go over really quickly though is how to present and record, and then I'm going to give you a few tips that you are going to love. So if you're a YouTuber or a course creator or somebody who's been using um, presentation type styles to do your recordings or using PowerPoint to do your recordings, you probably already realize that Canva is just taking things to a whole new level because if you use their built-in images and their colors, um, that can amount to your logo colors and everything is already kind of in there for you. They've even got videos you could use. It's all in one. It's going to save you so, so much time. So when they came out with the present and record feature, I was like, I had my pom-poms out. I was just so very excited about it and I love it and I've been using it already. The only thing I've noticed a few drawbacks because I use Camtasia in order to do my video editing and I so wanted to keep using Camtasia because I want control over my editing. I want to control the things I know how to control and add things and delete things and um, you know especially the biggest feature that I really I'm not enjoying in Canva is it does a little circle where it rec it shows you recording and it's like it took me forever to figure out how to get rid of that. So I'm going to show you guys a trick that I came up with that works amazing and it saved me so so much time and I really want to share that with you. Um, now you might be wondering, well, why don't you want your picture talking when you're doing a recording? And basically when you're doing something like this, where you're like a talking head, what they call it, this is all wonderful and people are paying attention to you. But as soon as I start putting slides up and I start pulling bullet points, or I really want you know my audience to concentrate on something and they also see my talking head, um, I find that very distracting, like at least I do. So when I'm looking at videos and I'm looking at the words and I'm listening to what they're saying and I'm watching them talk, I, I mostly concentrate on, on what's coming out of their mouth instead of what's on the slide. And that kind of defeats the purpose because you know people put up slides for a reason, there might be something on there. So another reason that you might not want yourself on a slide is, for example, if you're the type of person that just does, you just want to read your script, um, especially if it's longer, it's more complicated, or you want to make sure you get it just perfect, you don't want to sit there and read a script and try to look at the camera and read the script. You know, it just, it doesn't look natural. It doesn't sound natural. It's distracting for the viewer. Um, and you know, it just remove that pressure from yourself if you're just reading from script. So I'm going to concentrate mostly on showing you guys how to have that full editing control where you could do that as well. And you could remove yourself completely from the camera and just have your beautiful slides up. Does that sound good? All right. So enough talking, let's get watching. So once you finish recording and you've exported the MP4, then what you want to do is download all of your images, so all of your slides, because this is what we're going to work off of. Now, remember I said there's a few things in Canva that are a little bit glitchy. One of those things is when you export, at least for me, it might work better for you depending on the version of PowerPoint you have, but when you go to export, these beautiful slides into PowerPoint, a lot of the images might not turn up or the fonts might go wonky or something might not match up. So this to me is by far the easiest way because I just want the slides to look exactly like I have them, right? Um, so what you wanna do is go up to the three dots on the far right corner. You're gonna click on that. You're gonna click on download. And here are some options. You want to choose PNG high quality images. So those are the highest quality images you're going to get. Those are your slides. And see here it says select pages. So right now my slide presentation is 12 pages and I want all the pages. I'm pointing this out because 
if you have to change a slide, so let's say you're watching your video and you're like, oh, I said something and that slide doesn't really reflect what I said or what I added or whatever, you could come back here and make changes to any slide you want and then download just that one slide and then import it into your editing program. It's so beautiful. So basically what you're doing is you're just taking each slide and incorporating them as separate entities into your editing program. So let me just show you what I mean by that, okay? So again, make sure it's a PNG file. So those are your image files. Then you make sure you got all your pages. You're gonna click on download. And then what I like to do is add the word images at the front. So it's very clear that that's my image file. And what it's gonna do, um, so go ahead and click on save. And what it's gonna do is export it for you as a compressed zip file that you'll need to open up. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Okay, so here it is. So I named it images, so it's nice and easy to find. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. So see, it's a zip file. And then it opens up and here are all the individual image slides. All right, so now what you've got is the full recording from Canva, which is your voice and the Canva recording, which is with you on the video. And then you've got a separate file, which are all the images of all your slides separately. And basically what we're gonna do is import all of that into our editing program. So eventually what we can do is delete the original Canva with our video in it. And then we're gonna replace it with these images, which are the slides we created without our image in them. All right, so I hope that makes sense, but you'll see it in action in just a minute. So basically the next step is to import all of your pieces. So you're gonna open a brand new blank slate editor program, whatever you've got, um, name it whatever you want. And I like to just call mine demo um, because I'm doing a demo for you guys. And basically is I'm just gonna import the pieces. So go to import media. And the first piece that I'm going to upload are the images. So here again are the images. These are all the images. So I'm just gonna go ahead, and select the first one, hold my shift key down, click the last one that selects all of them. And I'm gonna click on import. And the great thing is, is that Canva numbers all of the slides. So I know exactly the order they need to go in. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back to import media because now I need my full recording. So that's my M. P4, which is right here. And sometimes I like to actually call this, I like to put a, in caps, I like to say final recording from Canva or something like that. Just because as you can tell, as you're doing this, you get a whole bunch of little pieces and um, whatever's gonna help you identify what you need. So this is the Canva recording we did and import that and there it is. Okay, so what you're gonna do is drag your recording to your timeline. And as you can tell, um, what I try to do, so as you can tell, like these lines here is when I'm talking and then this is when I'm not talking. And what I try to do is in between the slides is do long pauses. So I could pretty much just visually tell when it needs an image, right? But the problem is that as I was going through and as you might as well, if you're a perfectionist, like me or try to be <laughs> is when you're doing your recording you might be like oh well that sounded like doo doo so I'm gonna go ahead and redo it so you end up doing the same recording two or three times or you end up changing something or uh, or you just decided to you know just kind of forget what you had written down and, and try something else like whatever lots of reasons right so what I find is easier is instead of just trying to manually figure out where I'm going to place these images is I'm just going to look and I'm just going to use the scrolling feature. So basically what happens is this timeline again here is the full recording in Canva where we're on the screen. So here, have a look, right? So this would be, well, it's my chair because I was leaning forward when I was recording, but pretend that chair is me. So this is my little image. This is what I'm trying to get rid of, right? This is like this whole point. So you're gonna just kind of use this as a guideline. So here to start, we have this image. So I'm just gonna throw that in there, okay? And then at about this mark is when I start talking, so then I need my image too. So I can throw my image to there. And then what I'm gonna do is just 
even though I, I can just tell visually that I'm going to need to make edits there to take my sound out, just connect everything because it's much easier when the images and sound are exactly where you want them to then go ahead and start doing your editing. Okay, so I'm going to keep that there. And then what happened over here? Over here it was the same image, same image, and about here is where that image changed over. So now I need this image. So go find that image, which is image three. Image three starts it around here. And what I like to do is if an image is starting, I like to overlap it a little bit before the sound starts for that image. And then I'm gonna take the image before that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that because I, I just wanna give this a little bit more room. So see where the sound starts? So the image starts before that. Just kind of do it that way. It just kind of gives you a buffer and makes it easier when you're doing your actual editing process. Okay, um, so I hope you understand why I'm doing it this way. And see, here's that image, here's that image. This is where this image starts. So again, go. I'm gonna go before the sound and then I'm gonna go get that and that's image four. And just so I don't muff up, I could just tell one, two, three, four, <laughs> like everything goes in order. So I'm going to stretch this one to touch. Actually, I want this one moved over just a little bit more. Just give me a buffer. And there we go. Okay, and now I'm going to look where image number five starts. And there we go. That's probably about roughly where it starts. So I'll just put my thingy there. So I'll stretch number four up to there. Go ahead, grab number five, put it over here. And if you're ever not sure, you could go over your, your sound again and just be, because remember right now it's reading the images off of this, see in blue, it's reading the images off of this timeline, not what you're doing at the top. So don't you worry about that one bit. I'm gonna show you what to do about that. Okay, so go ahead, right? So that matches this image. So you, you have the little image icon here. And then over here, Right? It changes to this, and I could tell by the little icon on that image that it matches. So we're just pretty much matching. It's like it's like a matching puzzle. It could be a lot of fun. And as you can tell, this overall, it doesn't take too much time when you're doing it this way. So let me just speed this up so you guys don't have to get too, too bored. Okay, and there you have it. All of these images match up. And the one thing I just want to mention as well is when you do your individual images like that, if you muff up with your voice or you need to add some extra additional audio or whatever, these images, like you could just take them, move everything over and stretch them out because um, it's just wonderful when they're, you just get a lot more flexibility when they're added as individual images. Okay, so what you want to do now that your images are all in the right place right up into the end of your audio is remember these are the images we want to show. These are the images on this timeline that I just highlighted. These are the ones we don't want to show. So what we're going to do is right click and see where it says separate video and audio. So whatever, I don't know when you're editing program what the command is but what you want to do is find where it allows you to separate your video and the audio so this here is the old images we don't want that these are the bad ones these are the ones where we were on camera we don't want that right now so all you're going to do is highlight it and hit your delete key and now what's going to happen is the new images you put in see are the only images that are going to show and now you're not on camera anymore and all these little muff ups like like especially here like I restarted this like as you, you can probably tell from from the lines right I think I tried that then I tried that then I tried that and then I tried this so I actually am going to delete pretty much all of that stuff and just hit the you know just use my editing tool and delete that entire bit and just keep this section right here um, and you can't do that within canva or if you can it's not very apparent so this just gives you a lot more flexibility and then if i wanted to add things into my slide or add words or add other it, like just break it up with something else it's just so easy for me to do that now 
right? This is what I'm used to working with. If you guys have done a lot of videos, you guys are probably a lot more comfortable with video editing within your video editing software because there's just, there's just so much that we could do within here. And there you go, voila, it's definitely that easy. And it only, as you can see, only takes a few minutes. It doesn't take a great deal of time, but wow, it'll certainly save you a lot of time to do it this way. So wasn't that amazing and super simple, right? You guys could all go ahead and do this. So I just want you to know that when I was trying to figure out how to put this all together, I Googled the heck out of it, probably like you guys have tried to do, and you'll notice there's like no information that's available on how to put this all together. So I hope you guys really appreciate the effort that was put into this and that you guys aren't wasting well, now you don't have to waste all of that time I had to go through. So I hope that my pain was your benefit. And if you really did enjoy this and you guys are YouTubers as well and videotape people or, or course creators as well. So I really hope you appreciate the effort again that was put into this and you go ahead and leave me a comment because I want to know was this worth the effort I put in? Did it help you guys save a ton of time? Did it help you create beautiful videos? Did it help you take your PowerPoint presentations up like a million notches? And if it did, go ahead, leave that comment below because I want to hear it and I really, really appreciate it. All right. So remember with great power comes with great responsibility and take your newfound power and go create some awesome videos, guys.